Russian warplanes enter Swedish airspace. Russian combat aircraft entered Swedish airspace on March 2, close to the island of Gotland in the Baltic Sea. Announced by the Swedish Armed Forces, the incursion saw a pair of Russian Aerospace Forces, VKS, Sukhoi Su-27-30 series flanker multirole combat aircraft and two Sukhoi Su-24 fencer strike aircraft international airspace during bilateral Swedish and Finnish exercises in the area. The Russian violation of Swedish airspace is of course completely unacceptable, Defense Minister Peter Hultqvist was quoted as saying by TT News Agency. It will lead to a firm diplomatic response from Sweden. Swedish sovereignty and territory must always be respected. Images of the event were taken by Swedish Air Force, SWAF, JAS-39 Gripen fighters, which intercepted and shadowed the offending aircraft until they returned to international airspace. The incursion happened as Stockholm and Helsinki have pledged military assistance to Kiev as Ukraine plans to counter Russia's renewed invasion of the country. The Partnership for Peace countries have also raised the increased possibility of both joining the NATO alliance in the wake of the war in Ukraine, with Moscow threatening consequences should they do so. For some years already, Russian aircraft have incurred the Air Defense Identification Zones ADISAs, of NATO and Allied Air Forces, but to date have always stopped short of flying into a country's territorial airspace, which makes this event highly unusual. Ukrainian Armed Forces Destroys Many Russian Equipment As of 9 a.m. on March 9, Ukraine's military have also destroyed 1,070 armored personnel carriers, 482 vehicles, 317 tanks, 120 artillery systems, 60 fuel tanks, 56 multiple launch rocket systems, 81 helicopters, 49 aircraft, 28 anti-aircraft warfare systems, 7 unmanned aerial vehicles, and 3 boats. Russia's 40-mile convoy headed to Kiev continues to be stalled. Russia-Ukraine war, about 200,000 people remained trapped in the besieged city of Mariupol, after fighting stopped evacuation efforts over the weekend. The 40-mile convoy of Russian armed forces, which is headed towards Ukrainian capital Kiev, hasn't moved in the last few days, according to U.S. defense officials. The convoy was advancing towards Kiev via a road north of the capital from the Belarus border. It was first spotted in satellite images in February. There does not appear to be any significant movement along the Russian axis, an American official told reporters on Sunday, adding, leading elements remain outside these city centers. We cannot give specific distances today. The convoy continues to be stalled, the official added. U.S. intelligence agencies estimate that nearly 95% of the combat power Russia had amassed along the border is now in Ukraine. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said on Sunday that the United States has seen very credible reports of deliberate attacks on civilians in Ukraine. With Russian President Vladimir Putin vowing to press ahead with his invasion, the number of refugees fleeing Ukraine has crossed the 1.5 million mark. About 200,000 people remained trapped in the besieged city of Mariupol, news agency Reuters reported, after fighting stopped evacuation efforts over the weekend, with no sign that massive international sanctions were deterring Moscow from its invasion of Ukraine. Most people trapped in the port city are sleeping underground to escape more than six days of shelling by Russian forces that has cut off food, water, power and heating supplies, according to the Ukrainian authorities. About half of the 400,000 people in the city were due to be evacuated on Sunday, but that effort was aborted for a second day when a ceasefire plan collapsed. Russia threatens the West. Lavrov Kaleba meeting in Antalya without agreement. This Thursday marked the 15th day of the war in Ukraine. 
The meeting in Antalya, Turkey between Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba ended without an agreement between the two countries. Russia has escalated attacks on civilians as Ukrainians rush to flee through evacuation corridors. On Wednesday evening the Russians bombed a maternity hospital in Mariupol, where it is reported that so far at least 17 people have been injured and three have died, among them a child. The president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky said this is a genocide and continued to make calls to stop flying in the skies of Ukraine. The White House has warned that Russia could use chemical weapons in Ukraine. On the other hand, U.S. President Joe Biden will hold a telephone conversation with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan to discuss the latest developments in the war in Ukraine. U.S. and Romanian forces conduct joint combat drills. Armed forces of the United States and Romania conduct joint combat military drills called Justice Eagle as crisis in Ukraine rumbles on. Organizers say the biannual exercise is not related to the ongoing conflict in Ukraine-Romania's eastern neighbor. The U.S. and Romania are both members of the NATO alliance. It doesn't have anything in common with the entire context that we cope with nowadays in this region. This is an exercise, said Colonel Adrian Costaro of the Romanian Army's 9th Infantry Brigade The Scenario, it's 100% fiction, and it's 100% defensive.